how much of a problem is does that create for the police when there is so apparent there's so little apparent firearms control in this territory it's huge automatically when you respond to a call in Nunavut if you're going to a house you're automatically going to assume that residence has several firearms the one in question on the weekend with the homicide we know there were numerous you know from our database we knew that before even getting there and that's the the be one of the beauties of having it it's part of your risk assessment um, but the issue here to me is more not so much the registration of it but it's the safe storage and handling of the firearms which causes me the concern uh, here we are um, with the latest incident with two 15 year olds the question that I would ask is why or how do two young people have access to firearms after one o'clock in the morning in a small community and that they're able to walk around and discharge in a reckless manner rounds from those uh, long barrel firearms. That is the question that should be asked. So the registration, that's fine, uh, but it's the responsibility of the owner to ensure those firearms are, are left in a safe and secure manner, separate from the ammunition. But that the obviously is not happening. The database did tell you how many firearms there yes. were in that particular house. Yes. So in this case, it was helpful. Absolutely. It, it did help provide yes. some protection it does. to the members who were responding. From a tactical perspective, if you know how many firearms that you've got and you're going to a situation that develops into a barricaded situation, it gives you some context in terms of what the uh, capacity of the individual in that house has access to. And, uh, you know, it's no secret, through our history, there have been residences or buildings that have been prepared systematically with firearms at different window or door exit points for, for access. So it's part of the risk assessment and our members utilize that to their full ability. Uh, if I can add to that, uh, my concerns are not uh, solely uh, focused on Cape Dorset when it comes to gun safety. We had a similar incident three weeks ago in Repulse Bay that you probably are aware of where uh, there another individual uh, as a result of an incident in the main core barricaded himself in a house and there we only had two members stationed in that community and they took uh, direct fire as part and parcel of this incident as it was unfolding. So that causes me greater concern just basically from a capacity when you're looking at how you're going to resolve it. We've got to bring in support from a Callowit by a charter aircraft. So we were about four hours to get there which as you can appreciate by Nunavut standards is probably pretty good yeah. when you consider weather, distance and, and getting people mobilized. So uh, that causes me concern because I've worked in these small communities and when you're hiding somewhere for cover and something's going on, that four hours can seem like four days. Yeah. And uh, it, it causes, it adds to the stress factor that the members uh, engage in. And here is another community where it's not as if you're finished your shift and the next shift comes on behind you, you're it 24-7 in these small communities. So uh, that adds to the, uh, to the stress level that our members face here.